What kind of future do we have if we destroy our past? Has anyone who has pulled down a statue of Churchill, Lincoln or Columbus thought to ask themselves this question? I doubt it. The presumption that we can stand in perfect judgment over the lives of historical figures is not merely foolish and unfair, it's dangerous. Consider what the statue destroyers are in effect saying. They are saying that people in history should have known what we know. That's tantamount to saying they should have known the future. This is, of course, absurd. Yet more and more. Except it wasn't absurd, except for the fact that the statues were made uh, decades and decades and decades after the future, or excuse me, after the past that these supposed statues were erected during. These statues were made in the 1960s, more, most of. I will, say, I will give them that majority of these statues made during Jim Crow, during the fact that they uh, were used as a representation of fear-mongering towards the past, not during the present, not during shortly after the war to honor anybody, but no, towards to use as an intimidation factor of black pe towards black people. No. They knew exactly what they were doing. Shut the fuck up. Or people believe it. Why? Simple. It's what they're taught. It is the fruit of an education system that long ago prioritized... It is fruit of the propaganda that I spew because I'm full of bullshit and I love grabbing my white eyes. Mm, this is Twitch. ...tized empathy over facts that believes the ultimate point of history is not to learn I'm lessons just a from it, gentle but to judge it. British Nazi. ...from the preordained left-wing conclusions about such ill-defined concepts as social justice, equity, and tolerance. Apart from breeding ignorance... Sorry, I didn't realize uh, social justice, uh, tolerance, and equity are ill-defined, even though there's papers on papers on papers. I wonder if that at that certain point is only you having a hard time defining it as you uh, probably cannot read. This kind of education invites the student child really to be judge jury and execution i'm sorry i'm just i don't know is it the fact that he's british that makes this that more annoying over issues that they and increasingly their teachers know little or nothing about because no one has bothered to teach them the nuance complexity and context that is history No one has taught them the nuance of history that told them where they belong in their social class. It also breeds arrogance. I know things these people I know did something not about know, arrogance therefore I am better because I live it. ...than they were. They have nothing to teach me. In fact, I must teach them. And down comes the statue. A new, better history must take the place of the old one. In America, this impulse has culminated in the 1619 Project, an initiative started by the New York Times and now in schools everywhere, which... I don't know about the 1619 Project being... everywhere. But, um... There is dispute, you know, like common academics have, and that's fine, except for the fact that these uh, gentlemen uh, want to um, use that to their gain. Uh, use that to the fact that they just want to weasel in a weak little spot and go, Oh, is it very scientific? Because uh, I don't know about you, but I think that the white people are much better. And then this is just... I mean, how can you not look at this and not think of it? just straight up elitism? It, it's, I don't know why they picked a British guy for this, because it was his worst role. Attempts to make the arrival of the first African slaves into the American colonies the foundational date of the American Republic. 
1776, the American Revolution. In the new history, that was just about protecting the founders' slave interests. These men, some of the most remarkable humans to have lived at any time, are to be understood. One moment. I hate this. Hold on. Shut the fucking shit up. This tanky shit. Bull fucking. Ah. Okay. We're done with the tanky shit. Okay. I hate this fucking deification. This apotheosis of the fuck. The founders. I'm so fucking done with it. Like I am just. Who the fuck? They are 200 years old. Who the fuck gives a fuck about Bren? Ben Bren? Ben Franklin. I don't know. Fuck him. Sorry. I'm just so tired about it. Stood simply by their attitude towards this one issue. The 1619 project seeks to portray. Did I just like do the whole salute thing and the flag wasn't there? I don't fucking care. Portray America. The freest, most prosperous nation in world history, as except. Is it though? Is it though? Exceptional only in one respect, insofar as being exceptionally bad. This is a based. Based Prager U comes out with the truth and honest fact. Of course they got another Brit to talk about American imperialism as not that bad because we got cricket, of course. It wasn't that bad. Cricket was the best thing that ever happened. It doesn't matter that we enslaved a whole bunch of Indian people. It doesn't matter that we killed a bunch of people. No. It was lovely. I don't know. I'm in a bit right now. <laughs> but of course of course we needed to get this guy uh fully fed on his chips and fish and i don't know what they fucking eat because they don't know what good food is all they ever fucking had was imperialistic food all we have is fucking burgers and everything else is mexican or you know every other culture that we fucking hate purposefully destructive view of history it is one intended to pull down rather than to build up a healthy humane and in the truest sense liberal mind does not view history as a mere playpen for our moral judgment it recognizes that people in the past acted on the information they had just as we do today sure it would have been nice if the founders of america had abolished slavery in its constitution some, in fact, tried very hard to do so. But had they been unwilling to compromise, there would be no Constitution and no United States. 
all the sacrifices of the revolution would have been lost. So a compromise balancing the interests of the northern states and the southern states was reached. It would have been nice if the Japanese had surrendered before atom bombs were dropped over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Hiroshima. But they didn't. President Truman but they didn't. had to make his decision based... He had to make his decision and he needed to kill a whole bunch of Japanese people in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Even though that they weren't military bases. It was vital. <laughs> on the information he had at the time that an allied invasion of the Japanese home island would cost at least a million lives both American and Japanese of course the woke mind abhors these subtleties it knows the that woke. it is right and that everybody beware the woke mind phrenology <laughs> one moment I'm going to let this play before our current age, year zero, should have known better. Anyway, they were all bigots. Why should we give them any benefit of the doubt, let alone admire them or learn from them? Well, maybe because, like everyone else, the great figures of the past did the best they could under the circumstances in which they found themselves. That their efforts largely succeeded is why we are here. When someone tried to give Sir Isaac Newton credit for his world-changing discoveries in physics, the great man demurred. He said he was only able to achieve what he did by standing on the shoulders of the giants who went before him. Today's left rejects Newton. Yeah, no, exactly. They were definitely planning to, um, because they were coming from multiple different corners, the Americans and the Russians, but, you know. We needed to drop the bombs for the funsies. Newton's humility. It doesn't believe that we stand on anyone's shoulders. It imagines that if we could only liberate ourselves from the dusty, misguided, and misinformed ideas of the past, then we based might see further, fly still higher. This view is wrong. Divorced from our past, we would be utterly lost. We would not rise, but plummet. We would be forced to start again with far less in. We need more hate-filled statues that were not for history, but to intimidate black people. That's what they're for, he said in his British voice, understanding all American history. Insight, and with far poorer examples as our guides. Ironically, thanks to the statue destroyers. The great figures of the past have never looked greater. I'm Douglas Murray, author of The Madness of Crowds for Prager University. For Prager University. What the fuck is his voice? Give me a second. What did he say his name is? Douglas Murray. So, the Douglas Murray. And, let's see, British political commentary founded the center of social cohesion. 
which became part of the Henry Jackson Society. where he is associate director from 2011 to 2018. He is also associate editor of the conservative-leaning British political and cultural magazine, Spectator. Blech. Sorry, I have to share the name or the newspaper that I work for, for that. Uh, has written columns for publications as Standpoint, the Wall Street Journal, of course. Uh, he is the author of neoconservative. He's literally a neocon. Blech why we need it jesus bloody sunday truth lies in the saddle inquiry about bloody sunday what is this face what is this like just disgustingly punchable mug used of promoting far-right conspiracy theory oh and for being islamophobic of course he has the author has been linked to the so-called intellectual dark web mm loosely affiliated group of intellectuals who are critical of social justice and identity politics. Murray was born and raised in Hammersmith. Uh, the intellectual dark web is uh, mind dirt. So uh, while we go away from him for a moment, I got to go to the restroom. Uh, just a reminder, though, of when he was saying the founders didn't think of, you know, of course they didn't think of Slaves as humans. <laughs> no one ever thought that. Just a just a reminder. Uh, what I put up on the screen. <laughs> 